Welcome back. It's now time to go in depth. Jamaicans will head to the polls next week Thursday to choose the party they believe is best suited to govern the country's affairs. Both political parties have presented their manifestos detailing their plans for the next five years. In this in-depth, we focus on the ruling People's National Party, PNP's manifesto. To help us examine the PNP's document, we are joined by political commentator Kevin O'Brien Chang and economist Dr. Davidson Dawe. Thanks so much for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks for having Welcome. me. Welcome. Now, let's start with you, Mr. Chang. You've perused the PNP's document. What do you make of the manifesto presented by the party? Well, first, let me preface this by saying that last election, 2011, I thought the PNP manifesto was pretty poor. It was recycled, and that the GLP was much better. Despite that, the PNP still won decisively. So... I'm not sure how important manifestos are. Be that as it may, the PNP manifesto is again disappointing. A lot of generalities, very few specifics. Um, you know, it's mostly stuff that can happen, is happening, will happen, might happen. But the specifics are few and far between. In fact, they have 21 points they're talking about, you know? Um, as they made major points in their manifesto. Number one was, this is, a one, this is one of the two specifics, at at least 100,000 jobs over the next five years. Um, we've heard these job promises before. I mean, almost every PNP conference, Porsche Sim Simil has promised jobs which haven't been delivered, you know? And then number two, this is what a uh, very disappointing one. Continue to actively support a national security policy that increasingly empowers Citizens promote security, peace, and safety in communities while reinforcing a culture of lawlessness and public order. Now, that says nothing whatsoever. And I mean, the two big problems in Jamaica by the polls are jobs is one and crime is two. And the crime policy is non-existent. The one specific I have seen in their 21 points is a very curious one. Um, it's to... And expand the new and existing sewerage systems in Kingston and in 21 major towns at a cost of $750 million. Um, it's necessary, but it's not exactly something people would see as a, a big priority. But at least that's one specific we can poll them to if they do win and look at their manifesto. Okay, let's, let's get you... all short and specific. Okay, let's get you in, Dr. Dawe. Yes. Do you find that the, the, the PNP manifesto is lacking in specifics as well? Uh, yes, that, that's my opinion also. So I am with my friend, Sir Chang here. I believe that um, it, is, it is kind of empty as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's just a regurgitation, uh, regurgitation of some of the things that they said the last time. You see, we, can, we cannot, I, I personally think of this as a manifesto. I think I call it a show of paper, more or less. Huh? I believe that you know, they're, they're trying to rub something in somebody's face. Uh, that is really not in existence anyway, uh, because the manifesto doesn't really speak to what exactly the change is going to be in their, in, in, in their efforts to, to rally the country for another five years. Instead, what it does, it piggybacks on things that are happening now. Some of them are uncertain. Some of them have little or no substance. Some of them are just empty promises. Some of them, I can tell you, is going to take a greater amount of time than they actually projected for it to happen. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's just something that I don't think uh, the people understand. And so when we talk about manifestos, we have to really do it in, 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 in essence to the benefit of people. And I haven't seen that yet. And one of the things that I would really have loved to hear about is how they're going to bring about that discipline in society, how they're going to get efficiency happening in our nation, you know, things of, those na of that nature. I have to understand, I, I heard actually that uh, they talked about the education system and, you know, cutting the shift systems and so on. This is something that has been in the pipeline for a long time. I don't call that a manifesto. I just call that piggyback on the past. 
Okay, let's, let's now explore some of the proposals they have put forward. There's a pledge to lower the amount of taxes paid by Jamaicans, including reducing the personal income tax, GCT, and customs paid on consumer goods. What do you make of that? Is that feasible and achievable? Well, as I'm concerned, it could be achievable if we set the platform for it to happen. Remember, one of the biggest problems we have in Jamaica is unemployment. All right? And, you know, unemployment uh, among the youth is extremely high. So the only way you can begin to, 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 to capitalize on, on things of nature is when you put people to work because you need what you call a, a, a replenishing effect. All right? You, you, you know... Yes, we can say we're going to do this and do that, but you know it's only going to materialize if we set the basis for it. And so I am not too sure it would be something good if it does materialize, but I don't see how because they haven't told me exactly how they're going to actually um, mobilize their resources to do such a thing. Well, what about you, Mr. Chang? Yeah, well, as I say, if you promise to cut income taxes and reduce GCP and customs. By how much and when? Those are the natural questions. And to make a promise like that, or a statement like that without any specifics, it's, it's meaningless. And that's what I find the problem with this manifesto. A lot of, lot of words, um, and they sound okay on the surface, you examine them, and they, they really mean nothing. Let me give an example. One of the things I look in these manifestos for, my pet thing is always crime, crime and violence, security. Because Jamaica we know the history. In 1989, I came back to Jamaica from studying abroad. It was 400 murders. Went to 1,600 in 2007, and it's fallen now to 1,200. But still one of the highest in the world. And listen to this. We will reduce crime and violence in a sustained way by developing and implementing public safety policies that balance crime prevention and law enforcement actions. We will continue to rally the nation to advance our fight against crime and violence as one nation with one mission. Through public education and leadership, we will win the cooperation of our communities and families to defeat lottery scamming and significantly reduce violent crimes. That is meaningless verbiage. But, but Mr. Chang, in fairness to the People's National Party, they may argue that they, they have a Minister of, of National Security in the person of Mr. Bunting who have advanced legislation to fight crime. So the manifesto may just be a broad perspective yeah, of the, what the, is the, being done. One of the highest murder rates in the world. You, you, what have you done? The, the murder rate has gone up on Mr. Bunting. When the JLP left power in 2011, there were 1,100 murders. It's now 1,200. It's gone up, and it's one of the highest in the, in the world. What they're doing now is not working. So they have to come with new ideas to cut it down. And what do we see in this manifesto? The only specific thing, we will increase resources to the police to boost mobility and crime prevention, even as we systematically address issues of corruption inside the JCF and restore public trust and confidence. Where are the specifics there? There is nothing in this document that tells me how do you plan to cut our crime rate. What specific measures are you going to implement? There are none. Okay, fair enough. Dr. Dawe, do you think our politicians have run out of ideas? Because we had a manifesto in 2011 and now we have one in 2016. And the same concerns then are the same concerns now. I, I am sure that I'm sure they, they have the same kinds of ideas that we have. It's just that they don't have the will to, 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 really, to, to, to really put them into place. You see, the thing about it is they, 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 they're dealing with a, with a population that is not as, you know, as keen or as, as, ed, as would love them to be. And you see, they get away with that. You see, if we were a society that was more in their face type of society, then, you know, maybe they would be reconsidering how they do it. I mean, for example, the fact that I will not, I will not participate in, in a debate because of A, B, C, and D. I think that, you know, those things, we have to look at those things. But in terms of the manifesto, they never gave it much thought. They, you know, what they did, honestly, what they did was they said, well, you know, we have an advantage here, and we're going to just take up that advantage, anything we tell the people now, because we can say to them that we, we you know, we, we are doing well with the IMF, we are passing our, our tests, um, we seem like the economy is going to move forward. But they are doing nothing to show us or say nothing which shows that we are going to be moving forward in a particular manner. So, you know, the substance is missing. 
That's all I have to say. The substance is missing. As it relates to crime and violence, we have a situation in Jamaica where neither of the political parties have been able to understand how to deal with that problem. So it's not only a one-party thing. It has been a collective thing in terms of, of law enforcement and, and, and the government agencies and, and the social, the, the social um, uh, interventions. We have not yet been able to determine how to deal with that problem. And, and that's what I'm talking about. When you are creating a manifesto around crime and violence, you have to bring the entities responsible for bringing that solution to the fore. And you have to have discussions. So then you can do something that is substantial, something that is meaningful, and something that will last. Of a moving Jamaica to first world status, if the party is given a next term in office, is that easier said than done? Is that not a pipe dream? Honestly, well, give me a break. 1989, the PNP came to power. It's 2016 now, right? 27 years. They've been in power 23 out of 27 years. And give me five more years, I'm going to make your first word. Honestly, I mean, when people must have some respect for our intelligence, you know. It's like we can't think or reason when they make rubbish statements in our ears. I don't mind politicians making promises, but at least make some sensible promises that doesn't, don't insult my intelligence. That's how I feel about that one. What about you, Dr. Dawe? Well, you see, with me, you know, I have a difference. You know, they have an opportunity that they can do something great. You see, my problem with them is how they get. You know, I, I, I'm not into the political thing, but I'm, I'm a non-political person. I'm independent when it comes to those things. You know, you just say it as it is. The thing about it is, this is an opportunity that whoever gets into power has to push Jamaica forward regardless of the amount of time that they have spent in office. They have to now renew their resolve to make sure that Jamaica moves forward. And they have an opportunity. The thing about it is the problem that they have, actually, is that they do not have the approach that would, that would, that would um, actually bring this thing into fruition. We have to understand that in order for Jamaica to move forward, we must, first of all, educate our people, our People need to be educated to move forward. And if we do not do that, we're going to have a serious problem. Okay. So we can say whatever we wish. I mean, I'll give you an example. Now, we say that the Zika virus is, on, is coming to, to us. And yet I see people living on the gully banks, throwing garbage into the gully banks. I haven't seen one truck, you know, actually going into the gully and spraying the gully. But yet, we, 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 we know we, we, we fumigate the entire um, thoroughfares. It makes no sense. We have to go where the action is. And you see, and, and that's why I'm saying that an educated people makes the difference. Okay. If we do not understand that, no matter who is there, no matter how long they stay, how short they stay, we're going to be at the same position. We have to have some kind of integrity when we do what we do. We have to have the will and we have to have the, the, the spirit to do it. And that's my thing. As an economist, I've always said, you know, we love to talk about numbers and everything else. But I believe as an economist, we have to talk more about people. And if our people are not up there, no matter what you do or say, it makes no sense. You will never move forward. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Well, Dawe. I must say that. I, 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 I can't be Five again. seconds, Mr. Chang. Five seconds. I slaughtered the PNP manifesto, but I did last time, and they still won. So this is not to say they won't win again. <laughs> it's a close election, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right? Okay. Thank All you right. so much, gentlemen. <laughs>